Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Hymn number 657. Love divine, O love. gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of greatness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is all over his works. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs 
of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills to des the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all the flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full, and those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Hymn number 660. O oh, Master, let me walk with thee In only paths of service free Tell me thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. Teach me thy patience still with thee, in closer dear company, in work that keeps faith sweet and strong, in trust that triumphs over wrong. In hope that sends a shining ray, far down the future's broadening way, in peace that only thou canst give, with thee, O Master, let me live. O Most Holy One, our hearts rejoice in your love. May our lips and our lives always glorify you. Breathe your divine mystery upon us, that we may sense you in every moment, and our lives become a prayer. Grant us your holy peace. Take a moment and reflect on two simple questions. Are you the person God created you to be? Are you living the life meant for you? A few years back when my wife retired, she embarked on a frenzied purging of various items in our home. We came upon old VHSs and CDs, and one was Disney's Little Mermaid. Many of you know the story. The mermaid Ariel lives in a magical underwater kingdom. 
She was gifted with the most beautiful and enchanting voice in all the world. However, she was fascinated by the world above. Despite the warnings of her companions, she goes to the surface. She sees a human prince and falls in love. She cannot have him. He is human and she is a mermaid. So she cuts a deal with the evil witch. She will exchange her beautiful voice for legs. And in the process, she's double crossed. She did not know that her voice, the one that she exchanged, was what appealed to the prince. The witch uses Ariel's voice against her. The prince falls for the witch in disguise, and it becomes a classic duel between good and evil. Well, in the end, Ariel is changed into a human, gets the prince, and everyone lives happily ever after. Lovely fairy tale, and Disney, as always, makes it fun and adventurous. Ariel's desire for love and legs has a sense of innocence. Yet on a deeper level, it seems that it emphasizes the need to change to be accepted or desired. That somehow we are not good enough. The price we are willing to pay in order to belong. In the original Hans Christian Andersen story, the little mermaid suffers because of the change. It is as if a sword is being passed through her. When she walks, it is like she is walking on sharp knives. And it is because it's not who she was created to be. It's something false. And the sadness of the story is that for all the struggle she endured to be accepted and loved, the prince did not care for her. In our gospel, I reflected on the lengths we will go to be accepted. We endure these pains trying to fit in, all the while forgetting that we are God's beloved and we are created in that holy and divine image. Jesus, in using little things like seeds, pearls, and yeast, is letting us know that the treasure is inside. Everything and everyone is consecrated to God. How many people go through life wishing they had a different name, a different skin, identity, job, or body? They were unhappy with their true self because someone or something created unrealistic ideals or criteria for acceptance. You hear it. You're not good enough. You're not rich enough, pretty, strong, light, dark enough, ill, healthy enough. Just fill in all the blanks. And then when that happens, we spend our time being or acting like someone else. We create a false self that we believe the world wants or desires. And that false self is very demanding of our time. And it is convincing of the cause. And the cause is not a good one. Yet, it never is good enough or satisfies. The false self always disappoints. It hides the true treasure within you. When we live for someone else or something else, it becomes consuming, exhausting, and restrictive. It takes a lot of work trying to be or please someone else. And this only leads to unhappiness and despair. Often, when I meet someone who is always negative or angry or delivers biting comments, I wonder who or what caused the despair on this beautiful person. I also wonder who is the true person buried underneath the pain because they truly are beautiful. I believe that Jesus wants us to realize how special we are to God. More importantly, that our main focus in life, our identity, should be God. That is all that truly matters. And that centering allows you to fully understand your beauty, your meaning, your worth, and your belovedness. You do not have to be someone else or meet the world's expectation. It doesn't matter. And we ask why? Because you were created as God's beautiful, perfect, imperfect creation. 
to live into who you really are. The only time that we are separate from God is when we sin. Yet we believe in a God of mercy. And that forgiveness in God's reaching out enhances God's abundant love. Imagine allowing yourself to be fully loved by God and know that you are good. All that gives life meaning was placed inside your heart by God. Be it art, music, arithmetic, the outdoors, silence, or prayer, when it speaks to you in the heart, it is God's heartbeat. Yet we want to live other people's lives, wear other people's temporary garments. In my own life, there has been times where I spent so much try- time trying to be what others wanted. I could not recognize the person that God created, inside nor out. I had forgotten that God created me imperfectly perfect with all the quirks that are beautiful to God. In those instances, the further I move away from my true self, the farther I move away from God. Fitting in and pleasing others takes priority over God. Yet when I live into my true self, the one God sees and knows, I find God in all those unexpected places. Love is shared. Contentment is achieved with simplicity. Patience seems to grow. And forgiveness is a bit easier. Life takes on a beautiful and holy rhythm. Thomas Merton said, To be a saint is to be myself. This is why Jesus talks about the little things. A small seed grows into strength. A bit of yeast feeds others. A beautiful hidden pearl shines when discovered. Treasures waiting to be found in a barren field. They are all within our sight, but often ignored while we look for something greater. For no matter how badly we want love or to be loved, We cannot alter our basic nature and survive. It's only inside where it counts. And remember, God does not make mistakes. So go out and live God's love. God made you imperfectly perfect. And this is liberating. You do not have to worry about what people want or what they say. Be that beautiful oddball. If you want to sing when no one else is singing, sing at the top of your lungs. If you want to dance by yourself, Dance until you cannot stand. If you want to pray when they, everyone says to sit silently, shout a amen. And if you want to speak when the world is telling you to shut up, shout it out. And if you want to kiss the person you love, kiss them passionately. This is what the kingdom is like. Whether it begins as seed hidden in the ground, a treasure in the field, the kingdom comes when it's no longer hidden but revealed like a tree that is full grown or a treasure chest when it is open. What was lost is now found. What was a secret is known and what was hidden away is brought forth for everyone, the entire world to see. Isn't it amazing that God plants this within us? It's absolutely beautiful and moving to know that this is within you. Siblings, in the end, Ariel gives up her voice, and everything is fine and happy. But it is a fairy tale. Fortunately, we believe in the truth. And God's love is not a fairy tale, but a truth. And there is a beautiful story for each one of you. It begins and ends with God, who loves you with an indescribable love, who loves you and forgives you with a mercy that is unknown who created you with a specific purpose that is right there in your heart. This is our beautiful reality made known in Jesus Christ. We cannot change who we are. No, you do not want to change. You want to be who God created you to be. So Sarah, be Sarah. Tom, be Tom. Michael, live that life as Michael. Alma, change the world just as you are. Jude, there is only one you. House by house, person by person, say it, live it, and accept it of other people. Realize you are as unique as the sunrise. You already are a treasure. Enjoy this discovery.
when each one of us is able to do that and see one another for their treasures. Truly, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be at hand. And what a beautiful, sacred, and loving world it will be. Discover the treasure made known through Christ. Be one with God, and God bless you. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our words may find favor in your sight. We pray today for the names on our prayer list, for Donna, Sue, Michael, Joyce, Mike, Rick, Lisa, Tim, Kim, Rebecca, Anna, Jack, Jane, Nancy, Cameron, Megan, Cheryl, Stephen, Chase, Barbara, Catherine, Doris, Leah, Irene, and Dan, the Folk family, Dave, Jessica, Scott, Donna, Ricky and Paige, Austin, Frank, Bob, Jean, and baby Vincent. We also pray for those who serve in our armed forces. For Richard, Eric, Michael, Chris, Mark, Michael, Marshall, Nicole, Joshua, David, Tony, Mark, Timothy, Jerome, William, Austin, Neil, Rob, Evan, James, and Robert. We also pray for our first responders. For Jim, Rob, Frank, Tom, Joan, David, Michael, Mariana, Aaron, Josh, Doug, Art, Lee, Jesse, Mitchell, and Wayne. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief and tr or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God of the present moment, God, who in Jesus stills the storm and soothes the frantic heart. Bring hope and courage to your people as we wait in uncertainty. Bring hope that you will make us equal to whatever lies ahead. Bring us courage to endure what cannot be avoided and the obedience to refrain from what must be avoided for the well-being of all. For your will is health and wholeness. You are God and we need you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So let us say 
together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. This is hymn number 636, How Firm a Foundation. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said, to you that for refuge to Jesus have fled? When through the deep waters I call thee to go, the rivers of woe shall not thee overflow. For I will be with thee thy troubles to bless, and sanctify to thee thy deepest distress. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. The love of the faithful creator, the peace of the wounded healer, and the joy of the challenging spirit, and the blessing of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, surround and encourage you today, tonight, forever, and for always. Amen. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.